Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. We're the Gnomes of this is Sharon Oyella, and today we're going to be making miniature salt lamps and we're going to light them up. And I got the idea for these lamps in my last video when I was showing you how to make these crystals and geodes. And if you missed that video, that link will be in the pin comment below. So again, in this video, we're going to do the lamps where you can light them up. We're also going to make candle holders and you can make these any size. First of all, we're going to need pink Himalayan salt, and I got this at the dollar store. It comes with its own grinder, and the best glue to use is clear E6000. And we're going to be making molds to uh, turn into the lamps. Now, I started off using fabric only, but then I realized, hey, I could probably use these little glass jars, and that's what I did. And they turned out great. You could use a little glass jar, you could use a plastic lid, you could use plastic tubing, or fabric and I'm going to give you all those options in this video so when we start off we're going to start off making um, lamp molds using fabric like this or cheesecloth okay if you want to light up your lamps get uh, LED string lights these ones do not heat up uh, to seal on the rocks you'll need clear nail polish or this translucent sparkle nail polish called glitter glam you also want something to dry your pieces on so I'm using styrofoam a couple of large glue sticks some pins binder clips Things like that will come in handy. All right, guys, let's get started. Remember, there are detailed timestamps in the pinned comment below. All right, so I've poked some holes in my styrofoam. These will hold my glue sticks, and I'm going to put my fabric molds on top. And for one, I'm going to add a little bit of bulk to it with uh, some foil. I don't want too much bulk because these, these will bulk up with the salt crystals themselves. So I just want a little bit here. Just cut away some excess. And the other one's not going to get any foil at all. I'm just going to lay this cheesecloth right over top. So that's going to go right over top the glue stick and the cheesecloth itself has just been folded so it's a double layer. And I just put that right on top of the glue stick and now I'm going to be uh, painting over with Elmer's school glue. It's actually Elmer's glue all but it doesn't really matter. Any white PVA glue will work. Ding it all the way around and then I'm just going to pull the cheesecloth away from the glue stick a little bit. I don't want it to be sitting totally flat against that stick. And this one gets a piece of saran wrap over top just to make it easier to pull off later. And then my fabric over top that. And then brush the glue over top that. And again, I don't want it too bulky, so I'm just pushed it down. And now I'm going to leave it under a fan for 30 minutes only. No longer than 30 minutes. Otherwise, it's going to get too difficult to work with. So after 30 minutes, we're going to remove the glue stick. So this one, I'm just grabbing the, the bottom there and then twisting until it comes free. I'm going to expose the saran wrap under there and I'm going to grab onto it and try to pull it out of there from underneath the fabric. And the fabric is a little bit wet still so I can I can peel it off and I can reshape it after I get it off. And it's still damp so I'm going to set these back on their glue sticks and just kind of form this a little bit. And now I'm going to set these under the fan again and I'm going to give this about 10 or 15 minutes before I move on to the next step. All right, so my fabric now is dry and ready for the crystals. But if you notice the cheesecloth here, even though it was doubled over, there's some bigger squares in there. And I'm not sure if that matters or not, but I'm going to cover that with a nail, a clear nail polish just to kind of seal that in. Uh, this one, you can see the squares are so tiny, it's not going to matter. But I am going to cover this one with the nail polish just in case it matters. I haven't done more than one with the cheesecloth, so I can't say for sure if it matters or not. So just to be on the safe side. All right, and then you have to grind the salt and you wanna get a little pile into a lid like I've, I'm gonna do here in a minute. I just had sorted out some darker colors to see if it mattered much, but it didn't really make much of a difference. Um, I think the base that you use, like the colored cloth that I use made a huge difference, but the crystals themselves, no matter if you sort out the darker colors or just use the multicolor in the grinder, uh, the color is going to be the same. So what's going to make the difference of the color of your lamp is what the base is underneath it. So the colored cloth, gave me a darker lamp. So the color cloth is on the left and the cheesecloth is on the right so you can see a huge difference in color there. All right so let's start applying the crystals. First I'm just going to cut off some excess. I'm leaving uh, the part underneath my thumb there that's going to be cut down later on as well but I want to have enough where I can hang on to it with my fingers at the bottom. All right so I'm going to spread this E6000 evenly over the entire surface that I'm going to be putting the crystals on. So whatever size of rock lamp that you want. So spreading this out. And I'm using my, my nozzle of the tube to spread it out evenly as well. All right, so once I get all that on there, I'm just going to roll it into the crystals. Once I have it on there, I'm going to stick it right back on my glue stick. And I'm going to apply some with my fingers. 
anywhere I can see that it, it needs to be done. So I want to cover up that glue completely and then I, I'm able to squish it together. See with my fingers there? Once I have it all in the glue and the glue is not going to be sticking to my fingers, I can actually push it in, make sure there's full contact between the glue and the crystals. And I'm paying attention to the bottom. I want an even line uh, around the bottom. And you can see uh, the bottom of the salt lamp, I'm, I'm holding it together quite uh, tightly with my one hand there. And that's kind of shaped the bottom as well. So I'm going to take a look around here, see if there's any uh, bald spots. And there's one right there. So I'm going to reapply some glue and then stick the crystals in there. And then pat those down, make sure there's full contact with the glue and the crystals. And now I'll just take a final look here. And that looks really good. So I'm going to set this underneath the fan for 30 minutes at least. We want to do 30 minutes before we move on to the next step. All right, so that was for the fabric. Now, if you don't want to do a fabric uh, mold first, we can do the plastic like I talked about in the beginning. So I'm just going to cut a length here. I'm cutting it way too long uh, because one end I'm going to be using to hold onto while I prepare the other end. So I'm just going to attach a binder clip. And for the other end, I need to close it up because this will be the top of my lamp. So I'm going to add some E6000. I cut a little piece of fabric and I slit around the side so it'll, it'll lay down nicely. And I'm just going to glue over top of that. And now that I have the top closed off, it's just going to be the same way I just showed you with the uh, fabric mold. We're going to cover it with the E6000 over the whole surface. And then we're going to dip this in the salts. And once you have it covered in the salts, then you can uh, pay attention to the bottom of the tube. You want to have a straight line just like we did with the first one. So we're just going to prepare that now, just pushing it up with a little tool before I set this aside to dry. Now here's a couple that I made that are going to be candle holders and I didn't close off either end. Okay, so they're open-ended on both sides. And then I'm going to show you how to add a base later on. So if you're making candle holders, you don't need to close off the top with fabric. All right, so let's move on to the little piece of glass. Now I'm going to be covering this entire thing with E6000 except for the very bottom lip. So I'm just going to hang on to that. Actually, I'm going to sh shove something in there just to make it a, a little bit easier. So I'll just use this tube. Then I can use that to kind of hang on to. And now that I have a better grip on it, I can add the E6000 to the entire surface and then dip that just like I did with the previous two molds, making sure to get full contact between the crystals and the glue. All right, so once you have that step done, you need to let them sit for 30 minutes at least. Doesn't matter which mold you used before we move on to the next step. So I set mine underneath the fan and I give them about 30 minutes. So I'll let them dry here and we'll be right back. All right, so it's been a half an hour and now I'm going to reapply the glue. So I'm going to spread it around. Once I get it on there, I'm going to use the nozzle of my tube to spread it evenly. And this is why you want to leave that the first coat for half an hour because when you do this step here it could take off the crystals. So I'm just spreading this around not pressing too hard because the crystals are still uh, underneath the, the top layer it's still kind of damp under there. Right, so you'll notice that I've switched out pieces now this is the second dipping as well this is a glass bottle and I'm just popping in with an edit so you can see I started adding little veins of color uh, the more um, salt lamps I made I was getting more ideas so I just cut a little piece of yellow fabric and I laid that down into the wet glue and I'm going to put glue over top of that. I'm going to add another little piece to the back here. Just a little sliv sliver of color. It makes a big difference. So I glue that one in. And of course this is not necessary to the project. I was just popping in with that edit so you can see how to add a little sliver of color. Now we'll go back to the original piece and make sure to wipe off your nozzle. And now I can dip this again, spin it around. Now I'll get it back on my glue stick and same as the first time I'm going to use my fingers to get the crystals on there and I'm going to pat them into place. And now I'm going to shape the bottom a little bit more. I'm going to use this tool and I'm going to make an even line around the bottom and I'm pushing upwards creating a little ledge and this is where the base of my lamp is going to be added. So I'm just going to add more crystals as I, as I need them and keep patting those in pushing them into place. And of course, filling in any bald spots as you find them. And now I'll go around again with that tool, creating my little ledge under there, pushing upwards, keeping the line even all the way around. All right, so every rock lamp is different in its shape. Uh, they all have this very uneven look to them, which makes them absolutely beautiful. So I'm going to try to recreate some of that with my mini ones, of course. So I'm going to take that tool again, my little pair of tweezers there, and I'm just going to flatten out 
some areas and I'm going to make some lines with my tool. And you'll notice that the E6000, once it's covered in the salts and you've patted those salts in there, when you move the tool like I'm doing right now, it moves everything in one piece, like the glue and the salts go with it. So you're able to move that material around quite a bit. All right, so let's take a closer look here before I set it aside to dry. And I'm going to leave it dry now for an hour before I do the next step. All right, so I let those dry for about 60 minutes, and now I'm going to do the final coat, and this is going to be either Glitter Glam, and it's got that translucent sparkle in it. You don't want anything with a, with a harsh silver sparkle or anything, something that looks like that, or just a clear nail polish. And I'm going to completely seal in the surface with this nail polish. And you, and you do want to do that because it's going to harden up the surface, and it's going to seal in those uh, rock crystals. So I'll give all these uh, one coat of the nail polish, and then I'll let them dry. All right, let's start attaching the base. Uh, for one of them, I'm going to use twine, and it matches the wooden base on my real one. And then the other one, I'm going to use a piece of brown leather strip. I'm going to attach both with hot glue, but let's do the leather strip first. I'm just going to wrap it around, and then I'm going to cut off the excess. And once that's cut down, I just need a dot of hot glue on each end, and then push it into place. And this will be the back of my lamp where the seam is. And this one I was able to cut with scissors because it is a leather strip, and it's a plastic tubing. When we move on to the twine, we have to cut it a little bit differently. All right, and this is the a fabric mold. So this one we have to cut differently than we did the plastic one. So I'm gonna use twine, like I said, but I'm gonna paint it first before I attach it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and dip it right into uh, burnt umber here, and then I'll let it dry. All right, so my twine is now dry, so I'm going to attach it with hot glue. So a little dot there, and I've chosen the, the uh, part that's gonna be the back of my lamp, and that's where I'm gonna put the seam. Then of course you just hot glue the other end as well, and then just lay it down and run, run your X-Acto blade just underneath that base, and that will give you a nice clean cut. And the same goes for the plastic tubing as well, so I'm going to attach my painted twine here. And once that's attached, then I'll just run the X-Acto blade around the base and cut that free. All right, now we're ready for lights, and it's going to be different depending on what kind of mold that you used. So on in my left hand, I have the one I made with the uh, orangey fabric, and then the one on the right is the glass bottle. Okay, so they're gonna show light a little bit differently. Well, quite a bit differently, actually. So I'm gonna show you here with the uh, fabric mold what it looks like if I stick one bulb in there compared to putting in three. And that's not bad, it's got a nice warm glow. Uh, it could be a little bit brighter though. So I'm gonna stick in another one. So there's two, and that's pretty nice. And now I'm gonna do three, just to show you what that looks like. And you can test this out yourself, of course. And that looks beautiful, all right? So look how different it is if I put in one bulb into the glass mold. It's bright enough just by itself with one. All right, so I'll let you play around with the uh, different lighting. And in the next clip, we're gonna be adding lights to the taller fabric lamps, all right? And then I'll show you how to seal up the bottom. So let's get started. All right, so I'm gonna do the taller fabric lamps. I'm gonna use three of the bulbs. I'm just gonna show you how I wrap it, okay? You can do it however you want to, but I did it in a way where I had like a human form. So I had a bulb at the top, and then I had two bulbs, one on each side. So you just have to wrap away the excess wire. So you just have the bulbs at the end. And then I'll fold up the excess wire underneath that, creating a little stem. So let's install this now. And I'm gonna push this into place. I'm gonna turn it on to make sure that there's not too many lights in one little area. So it's a, it's a good idea to do that before you glue any base in there permanently. So I've just turned it on and that looks pretty, pretty good. So I'm going to add my cardboard base now. So for this part, you just have to keep trimming it down until it actually fits in there. I make a little circle and then I push it right into the base itself. So it's flush at the bottom. So I had to just test it there and now I have to trim it again. So I trimmed that a few times. I got a little tiny circle, and now that will fit in there. So I'm gonna use hot glue, and I'm going to just put a bead of hot glue around the whole inside edge there. And that kind of glues the lights in at the same time. Pushed my cardboard piece all the way in so it's flush with the bottom. And then it's a good idea to turn the lights on again because you don't wanna have uh, light streaming out the bottom area there. So what I'm gonna do, there's a couple of little holes. I'm just gonna fill those in with hot glue. And you can add a piece of fabric or anything, but I'm gonna do hot glue and then I'm gonna paint this after. So I'm just filling in the, in, in the holes and I'll wipe off the excess with my finger and then I can paint this base. 
All right, I'm going to give you a couple of ideas for the uh, extra lights that are on the string. Now the one right next to this one, I wrapped it with masking tape and then I painted the masking tape black. That way when I put it on the shelf in the dollhouse, that light that I just pointed to won't be shining. Okay, and the rest of them I can hide in the dollhouse or use them along the ceiling or wherever I want to use them. All right, and here's another idea. You can actually put the light through a shelf itself before you add them to the uh, lamp. Like I've done here, I made three candles. I put the light through the shelf itself, and then I made the three candles. And then I, I anchored the, uh, the light string behind. So the extra light right there, I've hid underneath masking tape and then painted that black. So that won't be shining when I put the shelf in. And the rest of the string I'll hide in the house itself or I'll figure out something else to do with it. And that will be coming up in, the, in one of my next videos because I'm gonna show you how to do the candles. All right, and you can also cluster them. This is how I use my real ones in real life. I have three together on my table. And then my candle, this is the open-ended um, little candle holders that I made, and you would add the base after. This one here is also supposed to be a candle holder, but then I thought later, maybe I could turn it into a hanging light like this. And I'll definitely be doing that, and you'll see that in a future video. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed. If it gave you some ideas, give the video a thumbs up. Don't forget to share with your friends. And in the next video, we're going to do light up candles and that little shelf in the background there. Until then, thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you soon.